Inside this box is everything we know about the universe. I love Lego. How many of you guys played with Lego when you were kids? Or still play now? <laughs> One of my favorite memories was when my parents bought us this huge big box of Lego that someone was selling secondhand. I remember going to collect it. There was more Lego there than my little brother and I had ever seen in our entire lives. It took two grown-ups to carry it all the way out to the car, and when we got home, we rehomed it in this big wooden box, and my brother and I would spend days digging through it during our school holidays, just trying to find that one particular piece we needed. There were blue blocks and red blocks and green blocks and normal pieces and weird exotic pieces. There were sets to build aeroplanes and sets to build houses and my personal favorite, sets to build all these cool spacecraft with which we explored the galaxy. And the wonderful thing was that, depending on our mood, we could let ourselves be guided by the instruction books or just build whatever fanciful imaginings came to mind. As long as the pieces fit together in their particular ways, we could make anything. I still play with that Lego today with my son when we visit my childhood home. Human beings love to make things. We love to build, putting together the smallest pieces to form great masterpieces, be it stones for a house or notes for a piece of music or millions of tiny electronic components to form particle detectors the size of a building. Human beings love to create, and it's one of the things that separates us from all other animals. But to do this, we need to understand the pieces that we are using. To fully understand the whole, we need to know and understand the parts. So then we start to wonder, what is this world we're living in? Well, today I learned that Klagenfurt is made of post-it notes. But what are the pieces that make up this universe of ours? And in what special ways do those pieces fit together? These are the questions I see my son pondering when he builds his Lego worlds on the floor. They're the fundamental questions in my mind when I'm thinking about my work at CERN. There are questions that span age groups, cultures, geography, even thousands of years of human evolution. And they're the questions that have driven the journey of science throughout the course of history. You see, science is a process. It's a curiosity about something that you notice that's maybe just slightly different than anything you've ever seen before. It's a wayward thought wondering, what if that settles into your mind and wriggles around in there until you decide to do something with it? Science is not whether or not we have these thoughts. The truth is we all do. It's about learning to catch them as they appear and being brave enough to let them guide you down a path you've never been on before. I was born and raised in South Africa, growing up with my feet in the grass and the sun on my skin and watching the beautiful southern constellations emerge above my head each night. I had school and homework and sports, of course, but I also had playing and learning and discovering, looking at leaves and bugs in my little toy microscope and building giant volcanoes in the garden with erupting lava that came down and swept away my toy dinosaurs. When I was about 15 or 16, I read, it, I read a book, and in that book, uh, there was a character who was an astrophysicist, and I thought that astrophysicist had to be the coolest job description ever. So I went to university and started studying physics. But during my undergraduate years, my interests took me down a more subatomic path, which eventually led me with my family to CERN. Now, CERN, the European Organization for Nuclear Research, was founded 61 years ago in an effort to unite the European countries on a common quest for fundamental physics research and to promote peace across the nations. There were 12 in founding member states initially, but today CERN has 21 member states and continues research programs with many more countries worldwide. The history of CERN holds many remarkable achievements where the boundaries of science and engineering have been pushed time and again to probe nature's most fundamental mysteries. From revolutionizing particle accelerator techniques and find the discovery of the carriers of the, of the weak force 
to the invention of the World Wide Web, CERN has been a center of innovation and technology across the decades. And of course, we have the current flagship project, the Large Hadron Collider and its associated experiments, which gave us the discovery of the Higgs boson in 2012. Now, the idea that the universe is made up of a small set of fundamental particles is not a new one. It was the ancient Greek philosophers who coined the term atomos, meaning indivisible, from which we get the word atom. Now, of course, now we know that the atom is not indivisible after all, but it's actually made up of smaller components. Protons and neutrons bound together in a tight nucleus with a cloud of electrons orbiting around them. And as our experiments have grown larger and more sophisticated, we've discovered that the protons and neutrons themselves are made up of smaller particles called quarks. We live in a universe made up of Earth, well, we see a universe through our five senses. We see Earth, plants, trees, rocks, that sort of thing. And we've been able to bring it down to a small set of building blocks. Over the past 50 years, we've refined our understanding of the universe and the particles that make it, make it all up. And theorists and experimentalists have worked together to form the standard model of particle physics, a universe set of building blocks that makes up everything that we know. Now, let's just take a moment to appreciate how amazing this is. We learned the word Umwelt earlier, and that means our own experience. And we see the world through our five senses, but we've been able to bring it down to the tiniest constituents of matter, far smaller than anything we could ever see with our eyes. That's like being given a whole baked cake and being able to tell which ingredients were used to bake it and in which specific proportions. It's pretty amazing. We're, we're just small, squishy creatures on a watery blue planet, orbiting a rather average star in a pretty normal galaxy, and we're able to tell what the particles are that make up this entire beautiful universe of ours. So do you want to know what's in the box? All right, well, we have the quarks called up and down. And what, one of the things that we've learned is how they can join together to form particles like the proton. In fact, you'll never see a, a quark on its own. It always comes in twos or threes. We also have our friend, the electron, and its partner, the neutrino. Now, this little family of particles right here could be used to build up everything in the universe, but for some reason we don't quite understand. Nature has given us two more families, just like it, each slightly heavier than the previous. These are the matter particles called fermions, and they make up all the stuff in the universe but we also have forces, like the electromagnetic force, which keeps the electron in orbit around a proton. Now, in particle physics, forces are also carried by particles, called bosons. So the electromagnetic force is carried by the photon, the particle of light. Quarks stick together to form particles like the proton, using gluons, because they glue stuff together. And the W and Z bosons are the carriers of the weak nuclear force responsible for nuclear decay. Our standard model theory is like our Lego instruction page, telling us the particles that we have and telling us the rules in which we're allowed to combine them and put them together. The fermions are the matter particles that make up stuff, and the bosons are how the fermions interact with each other. And of course, we have the famous Higgs boson that was proposed back in the 1960s and discovered in 2012 by the Atlas and CMS collaborations at CERN. It's been really amazing working on the Atlas experiment during this time and even playing just a small role in the Higgs discovery. There are more than 3,000 people working on the Atlas and CMS collaborations each, keeping the detector running, making sure that the measurements of the particles are as good as they can be, and conducting searches for new particles and measurements of the ones that we already know. Now, the Higgs boson is a very special particle because without it, our standard model theory would tell us that all the particles would have no mass. And that clearly is not what we see in real life. The Higgs boson comes from a Higgs field, which permeates the universe and interacts with all the different types of particles. 
the more a particle interacts with the Higgs field, the heavier its mass. Now, the LHC is a wonderful machine. It's a circular machine that accelerates protons to nearly the speed of light and smashes them together millions of times per second. Now, the speed of the particle is what's so important here, because the faster the, particles, the, faster the protons are going, the more energy they have, and the more energy they have, the more interesting are collisions. You see, at low energies, the protons would repel each other because they are like charges and just pass each other by. That's not really fun. But at higher energies, the, the protons could bounce off each other, and if the energies are higher still and the protons collide head on, they could break apart. And that's when the really interesting stuff starts to happen. At the energies of the LHC, the protons are an ever-changing soup of quarks and gluons. And when two of these from a proton-proton collision combine, we can form new particles. Here again, the amount of energy we have is important. Energy is the currency that we use to play our LEGO universe game. And, when we form two, and, and what we can do with our two quarks is either form a composite particle, or if we have enough energy, we can go into our standard model box and swap it out for one or more particles. As long as we have the amount, the energy to pay for that particle, we can choose whatever we want. And of course, some particles, like the Higgs boson, are a lot more limited edition than others. You're only allowed to choose a Higgs boson one in every billion proton-proton collisions. And that's why the LHC is so special. It's the only place in the world where we have enough energy to create Higgs bosons, and the only place in the universe where we can play with our building blocks of the universe millions of times per second for the chance of creating one. Well, that's it then. Our standard model is complete. We might as well just pack it up and go home. Well, Luckily for those of us like myself who like to play, nature's not quite done with us yet. At the beginning, I said that in this box was everything we knew about the universe, and that is true. But what I didn't say was that although these particles can be used to make up everything we know, from plants and animals to stars and galaxies, all of that itself makes up only 5% of the universe. What I'm saying is, there is 95% of the universe out there that we don't know about. Oh, we have names for it. Dark matter and dark energy, the one dictating the universe's shape and the other driving its expansion. And we have ideas of what they could be, like whole new sets of particles hidden away from us because they don't interact with our standard model bosons. This little box is just one small set of a much bigger box of our entire universe. Wouldn't it be amazing if that one had a whole new set of particles just waiting to be discovered? Can we find them? Perhaps? Should we try to? Definitely, and we are. And should you care about our search for them? Absolutely. You see, we're embarking on a path untraveled, illuminated by science and binding nations together in the experience. We have the chance to discover a whole new landscape of particles. And come on, who doesn't love getting new blocks to play with? We don't know what we will discover, and we don't know where it will take us, but that's part of the adventure. You see, science isn't something that happens behind closed doors, inaccessible to all but a select few. It's a part of each and every one of us, as natural as playtime is to a child. It's a celebration of truth, a celebration of proof that despite war, oppression, and even economic meltdown, we as human beings can come together to create, and in doing so, we have made discoveries that will from here on shape the future of humanity. We're exploring, and everyone should feel proud to be part of that. We are playing with the building blocks of the universe. And that's exciting because everyone here is a bit of a scientist inside. Because you see, science is not something you grow into. 
It's something you never really grow out of. Thank you.